So before we get started, this video was actually a request by some of the wonderful Subscribestar bros. The last few updates made a full spooky month impossible, but we can stretch it in November, because why not? That's right, it's time to talk about John Carpenter. We believe nature is solid and time a constant. Matter has substance and time a direction. There is truth in flesh huh? and the solid ground. The wind may be invisible, but it's real. Smoke, fire, water, light. They're different, not as to stone or steel, but they're tangible. So even though we couldn't make it a full October theme, I've been wanting to talk about some horror movies, and the autumn season is all around a good chance to do it. So we're going to extend Spooky Month for a few weeks to cover some of the most famous movies in horror history, and one of the most iconic film trilogies in the entire cult film genre, the John Carpenter Apocalypse Trilogy. Something that's been requested over and over again, and for very good reason. So for those unaware, the Apocalypse Trilogy is an unofficial series of movies made by the iconic cult filmmaker John Carpenter, covering themes of the end of the world and mankind's extinction. You have The Thing from 1982, Prince of Darkness from 1987, In the Mouth of Madness from 1992, each one exploring a different situation that could bring about the apocalypse, whether it be alien parasites to Lovecraftian beings, or the devil himself. The trilogy isn't an intentional thing made by Carpenter, but it's widely regarded as a must-watch by fans, especially The Thing, as that's one of the most famous science fiction horror films ever made. He ain't tying me up. Then I'll have to kill you, child. Each film feels extremely different from the other, and they all succeed in fleshing out a very out-there concept. Now, technically, the movie we're talking about in this video is the middle chapter, Prince of Darkness. But the reason I wanted to start off with this one is because, honestly, this movie's kinda mid. It's not bad, definitely nowhere near the worst thing John Carpenter ever put out, and you would be amazed at the competition for that title. But it's easily the weakest of the trilogy, and it's kind of tragic because it does have a lot going for it. So, Prince of Darkness came out in 1987, a year after the release of Big Trouble in Little China, an absolute classic you need to watch if you have any appreciation for action comedies. It's all in the reflexes. And some of the actors from that movie returned to Prince of Darkness, Victor Wong and Dennis Dunn in particular. Donald Pleasance plays a role in the film as well, his first role with John Carpenter since Halloween. You even get a cameo by Alice Cooper as one of the homeless guys. He actually allowed them to use one of the stage props he has for concerts for one of the kills, and he wrote the song Prince of Darkness for the movie. In fact, his management team worked right alongside John Carpenter. It's a pretty cool bit of trivia. Regardless, the story of the film revolves around a group of quantum physicists who are led by their professor to an abandoned monastery. There, they discover a strange fluid bubbling up from the grounds of the church, and they decide to study both it and the history of the building itself, which once belonged to an order of priests that, according to legends, could communicate telepathically. Once they begin their investigation, they are plagued by supernatural happenings around the church, and stumble into evidence that points to the rise of Satan himself. So you can immediately see this is a very out-there kind of movie. Scientists get a little too curious about an ancient location, and accidentally unleash an ancient evil. John Carpenter was very inspired to do something different for his return to horror, as before this he did Starman and Big Trouble in Little China, which were major genre deviations as he was propped up as being a horror director, thanks to things such as Halloween, The Thing, and Assault on Precinct 13. Kind of neglecting the fact that Assault on Precinct 13 was more of an action movie, and also you have Escape from New York, which is also just an action movie, but he had the reputation of being a horror director more than anything. So he decided if he was going to go back and do something horror-related, it would stand out from a lot of the stuff being churned out by the Hollywood system back then. As you can probably tell, the story is very H.P. Lovecraft, which was a massive influence for John Carpenter. And personally, I think the concept itself is very cool. Quantum physicists facing off with clearly religious happenings is a great idea. Seeing the clash of science and faith, how people focused on total rationality now have to react to the complete irrational. There's a lot of potential here. And to the movie's credit, it's unafraid to have some scenes exactly like this. In particular, you get a good dynamic between Victor Wong and Donald Pleasance. Victor being a professor who's open to the chaos of quantum physics and exploring the universe around him, and Donald a traumatized priest that fears they might be delving into something they can't understand and can't handle. The one big thing I will give Prince of Darkness is that it really does feel like a classic Lovecraft story, even more so than In the Mouth of Madness or The Thing, which is saying a lot. But while the other two films are more outwardly Lovecraftian, Prince of Darkness has the best emulation of what one of his old stories would feel like. 
a collection of intellectuals running into something that breaks every rule of reality that they were taught to hold sacred, and the situation devolves until they have to abandon logic and reasoning and become just as crazy to survive. And you're left with an ambiguous ending that never confirms if they truly made it out or not. In the Mouth of Madness and The Thing are the better stories, just hands down, but Prince of Darkness has its own unique style to it that managed to build up its own fanbase. And I think it's because how much it emulates a traditional horror or sci-fi story that could be found in a pulp magazine. There's even some creative sequences, like the guy collapsing into a pile of scarabs. It has unique visuals that can really stick with you, but this is where I have to disclose something. This movie didn't click with me. More than just that I didn't think it was scary, I mean, I just flat out wasn't impressed. I came away from it with a very strong, meh, it was okay, and I know what the issues were that kept me from loving it. For one, despite the very strong cast of actors, you don't really get an interesting protagonist. It's kept to an ensemble, and while you have guys like Donald Pleasance, Dennis Dunn, and Victor Wong, they can't carry the weight of the entire movie. There's a collection of other jobbers that have to fill out scenes, and they range from alright to just flat out boring. The sequences they are involved in can be cool, like the guy screaming out Amazing Grace as he walks through the halls is actually pretty creepy. Same with the scene on the computer, but they only really exist in the movie to do that. Another big problem is that the movie is full of good ideas that only really get touched on once or twice. The idea of a church that actually exists to seal away Satan from humanity is cool, but it never really digs much deeper than that. If you weren't paying attention to specific conversations, the story can quickly develop into just nonsense spooky stuff. Now, the plot of the movie is cool. Physicists are trapped in a church by a horde of possessed homeless people that will kill them if they try to escape, because they're supposed to enact some ritual to bring the devil into the human world. But it doesn't really do anything beyond that. I mean, they're possessed one by one, and you see the ritual building up, but it only really feels like a good groundwork that other films have taken and used better. The horde occultists keeping people in one building? Yeah, the void did it better. Rational people who are faced with pure rationality and reality-breaking entities? In the Mouth of Madness, From Beyond, Reanimator, yeah. Hell, the scenes with the homeless people kind of gave me an Assault on Precinct 13 vibe, just a little. Even the concept of Satan being sentient goo is actually a decently fun idea, but it's not really used for anything beyond Satan is goo. There was a ghost! This ectoplasm! Another thing to mention is that there isn't really any visceral gore or violence. Not saying that it needs tons of blood, but it feels especially toned down. You get one or two good scenes of gore, the guy who gets impaled and the scarab man is uh, pretty fucking sick, but you have a setup for something very satisfying with the guy who slices his own throat open, yet it feels very weak. Maybe it was meant to be more violent and it got toned down due to censorship? Possibly? Maybe? But there's no payoff. Even the way the demons kill people are toned down, they just spit like a poison or some kind of acid down your throat, where I think it's supposed to be like the, the Satan goo. Once again, I'm not asking for Day of the Dead level blood and guts, but just a little bit more would've been nice. I mean, it's a story about demons possessing people and going on a rampage. You have carte blanche to get as violent as you ever could've wanted. You know, a little bit more would've been nice. Now, the body horror with the main chick who gets possessed and is used as the vessel for Satan, that's pretty good. She's covered in lesions and is completely unrecognizable from how she looked in the beginning of the film. It's pretty gnarly and is the main image everyone remembers from the movie, because, yeah, it's a highlight. A lot of the budget must have went into these effects. Once again, it's not as good as something you'd see in The Thing or really any of Carpenter's other movies, but the body horror in the film is enough to keep fans invested just to see what comes next. It plays with a lot of different ideas. I've also heard interpretations that this is all an allegory for sexual promiscuity and the AIDS crisis, which a lot of people have said about The Thing, but eh, yeah, the point is, it, it was happening at the time, it was the 80s. And I will say that the dialogue in the film isn't half bad. It's not the best script, that belongs to The Thing and Big Trouble, and I will say Assault on Precinct 13 had some pretty good one-liners. Can't argue with a confident man. But there's pretty charming moments between characters in Prince of Darkness. A lot of it is probably carried by the actors, because there is serious talent on display. It's still something to praise, because it is a highlight, but I definitely can see where if they got different people to play the role, yeah, it could be very, very dry. Now, I mentioned before that this is technically a religious horror movie. You know, the thing is all about alien horror, and In the Mouth of Madness is about that ancient cosmic horror. Well, Prince of Darkness is a kinda sorta religious horror movie. It's not directly Satan, and it does go out of its way to kind of merge the ideas of quantum physics and science with religion. That religion is simply something we've yet to understand, and the larger cosmos could be a lot more terrifying than we ever expected. Now, it's not something explicitly like In the Mouth of Madness. 
It still keeps it very much in the realm of religion, as you have iconography of churches, you have the priest character played by Donald Pleasance, uh, they quote Bible scripture. It, it wants to beat you over the head with the idea that this is still the realm of religion, so it's different from any other sort of Lovecraftian type story. Carpenter essentially set out to see what would happen if he merged quantum physics with demons, and it is an interesting enough idea itself. But honestly, I, uh, uh, the, the, yeah, not gonna lie, I might have to cut the video here. I've said all that really needs to be said for Prince of Darkness. There's a reason I called it mid, because it kinda is. It just sort of exists in the trilogy. It's not terrible, but by every definition, it's a middle-of-the-road experience. It has good concepts, but doesn't dedicate as hard as something like They Live or Escape from New York. It has fun sequences, but isn't as trippy or intense as In the Mouth of Madness or The Thing. It has good dialogue, but isn't as infinitely quotable as Big Trouble in Little China. It's not even as cheesy as something like Starman. It sits right in the middle. Inoffensive, but not in a bad way. If you're an absolute absolute horror junkie, you've definitely already seen this. And I will admit, this is all a personal preference deal. Some people love this movie, since it's basically a Z movie made by a legitimate filmmaker. But Prince of Darkness just didn't rope me in. I like the other chapters of the trilogy way better. So it could be a biased thing where I love the other two so much, I can't help but compare it to the others. Which isn't fair, I admit, because the trilogy is unofficial, and, and Carpenter only really acknowledges it in hindsight. But regardless, that's just how I felt watching it. Definitely sit down to give it a chance yourselves, though, because you never know. Yeah, I mean, hell, it's Halloween, so here's something new you could check out that you probably haven't seen before. Even if it doesn't click 100% with you, you can at the very least say you've seen it. And hell, once you watch it, you probably realize why this video seems so short in comparison to other uploads lately, because there isn't much to describe. The plot's kind of thin. If I went in to talk about every single detail, I'd probably only really be able to stretch this maybe another five or so minutes. It's not really much to talk about. It's another example where it's more about how you feel watching it, and not really about the story itself. But yeah, that's all I can really say. Until next time, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys. Your kingdom, father, does not include my unconscious. It's mine. I may abuse it any way I wish. Hey, loser. Do you want a shirt? Do you want a t-shirt? I have shirts now. Look in, look in the description for a link to a t-shirt you can buy. If you don't buy the t-shirt, I'll kill your family. If you don't buy the t-shirt, I'll poison your dog. If you don't buy the t-shirt, you're going to be the only person in town that does not have a t-shirt. Everyone's going to look at you funny. There's going to be social consequences to not having one of these t-shirts. I'm now making express threats of violence against you if you do not buy my t-shirt. I will call the police, tell them how they're not, you know, you're not buying my shirt. They're gonna plant crack in your house, and they're gonna arrest you, and then beat you up in a jail cell. Buy my shirt.